eat it. Not the best for you, but... Okay, so we're live on Periscope, going live now on YouTube. 3% and growing. We're a little bit delayed tonight. The ePress 21 webinar, Are You Ready to Self-Publish, went a little bit long. We had a little bit of technical issues. All right, starting the broadcast on YouTube. Yep, all right, okay, save. All right, we are now live on YouTube, fantastic. All right, welcome to the January 2018 edition of Ask AS21 on the 21st, our monthly webcast where we invite viewers to send in their questions about book publishing, podcast recording, video production. I'm Keith F. Shelvin, publisher of AS21 Media. We are an independent media company based out of Mount Vernon, Virginia. We do this webcast each month to give creatives and those that have that creative feeling the chance to get their questions answered, to get their thoughts explored, to help them create. So it is a new year. It is 2018. It's a new chance to create. It's a new opportunity to get going on whatever your passion is, whatever your story is, whatever you want to share with the world. And so feel free to send in your questions. If you're watching on Periscope, if you're watching on YouTube, we've got the chat capability there, sending questions there. You can tweet to us at AS21, that's A-O-I-S 21. Use the hashtag AskAS21 and we'll get your questions right here. We do this every month. We usually have a good conversation. I think last month we were a bit light on conversation because, I don't know, maybe the holidays just kept people busy, but we're here tonight. Let us know what's going on. Let's see. Going to the Twitters. Hashtag ask A is 21. And the latest. Okay. Nothing right now. And it's, is it Hi, how you doing? There we go, share it on Twitter. <laughs> That's good to hear. Did you have a good weekend? Wow, 286 people invited. Fantastic, thank you. So we're talking books, podcasts, and video series here. So any questions you have, feel free to send them around. What are you reading right now? I love to hear about what people are reading. We usually actually do a full Facebook blast on that, but today's been a bit busy. Haven't had a chance to send that out. I'll probably do that before midnight. Uh, I just started reading. Let's see. I don't read. I write. Oh, fantastic. What do you write? Uh, I just finished reading Galileo's, da Galileo's Daughter by Dava Sobel. I'm about to start Unfortunately the Milk by Neil Gaiman. Let's see. So if I had my arms tore off by alligator and I had to wipe my ass, would you help me? Uh, if I had to, I guess so. You write fiction? Fantastic. That's an odd question there. Why well, those questions? Those pop-ups on the screen disappear just a little bit too fast. Ah, uh, 
sorry, I did get to, I think it disappeared before I could see it too fast. You said you write fiction. Any specific type of fiction, genre fiction, literary fiction, science fiction, fantasy? Let's see. Let's check in the timer there. Action realistic. Cool. That's a good market. Uh, what what do you write? Uh, is it shorter stuff, longer stuff, blogging? What type of medium are you working in? Medium sized. Alright, are you publishing or are you just keeping yourself, sharing it with friends? Okay. Well, I am here to answer any questions you might have about the publishing process. At this point, we have published here at AS21 20 books. I personally have written and published three books, and I'm working on four more right now. So we'll see if I can you know, knock those out this year. That's one of my go my uh, goals, my resolutions for this year, is to finish one of those four. Preferably all four. We'll see. Well, for, have you fit? First of all, determine are, if you're finished writing it, and if you've done as much as you could with it. And then the first goal is to have somebody read it, either some, a good friend, family member, or something like that, just to give you the feedback. Because having someone close to you give you that first feedback, it's something that you will hopefully take more to heart and understand that the person is trying to give you honest and constructive criticism and then from there you would start to start the process of trying to find somebody to work with oh cool, cool. have you gotten any feedback from those five to ten people very good very good Okay, so then what you need to do is once you've finished your last edit is you need to start shopping around for the possible different publishing things that you can go on. You can self-publish using a site like CreateSpace or Lulu or Ladaris or uh, there's a couple others out there. If you just want to do something like an ebook, you could just work with Smashwords or Amazon or a couple others. If you want to try to find a, a traditional publisher, th for those you need a literary agent. Oh yeah, it's definitely easier. It's all in your hands if you self-publish. You get to... I, some self-publishers off, offer editing, some don't. Some offer uh, help with cover design. And all of them offer at least the ability to have the finished book, either in ebook or in print. And then some very basic distribution. Whereas, like, you know, Create Space that puts your book on Amazon. Lulu has their own market. Uh, and some of the other self publishing houses, they have some sort of cooperation with another company. Some sort of distribution help. I uh, just understand if you are, I mean, yes, it is the easiest thing to get started. But then once your book is out there, it's entirely on you to do all your marketing and sales. Cool. Well, for action, adventure, fiction, there's quite a market for that right now. I, one thing you could consider, if you are interested in just a little bit more work, you could at least try to shop around with some of the independent publishers. That might be interested in your work. Uh, traditional publishers is a very, very difficult process. Now, if you want to, uh, uh, don't understand the difference. 
Okay. Well, you, there's nothing stopping you from starting to write the next one while you're trying to get the first one published. There's nothing that says you have to focus on only one at a time. I were in the process of publishing the book, The Will of the Magi, that one of our authors wrote. And while we're doing the editing, he has now started writing his next book, so. Oh, cool. Yeah, that sounds, that's fantastic. It's a good market to get into right now. And having that ability to write in several different genres is a definite plus right now. Uh, there's no reason to pigeonhole yourself in just one genre. I mean, my first and second books were both uh, fiction, contemporary fiction. My third book was a sports memoir. My, the four books I'm working on right now, one of them is contemporary fiction. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, dystopian is a very, very popular genre right now. Uh, it's been going for a while now, but it's pretty much been kicked into overdrive over the past 14, 15 months. Uh, so there's definitely a lot of people out there interested in good dystopian work, especially ones that present a different idea of things than what was already done in Handmaid's Tale or The Road or... Walking Dead, or any of those, and the themes that they explore. So, yeah, so for when considering what to do with self publishing, I mean, there's a plenty of online services that doesn't matter where you are, they can work with you. But I also recommend looking in your area for any independent publishers that. Now, some of them are very niche, where they will only work with certain authors, certain uh, genres. There are a few open genre publishers out there. There are a few that are limited, but not as limited as others. Like Some that only work with women authors, some that only work. If you're working with an independent publisher, usually you don't have to have an agent. Sure, you can ask whatever you want. Uh, usually, when working with a self, if you're self-publishing, you're in charge of filing your copyright. If you're working with most independent publishers, they will help you with it. Uh, that's pay, you know, sending two copies to the Library of Congress, paying the thirty-five dollar copyright fee, and then the copyright is covered. But even if you don't actually file the copyright and you just put the copyright symbol and year your name on the verse of the title page. Your book is copyrighted. It doesn't have to be sent through the mail. It does. You don't have to make some grand statement. Once you put that on the backside of a title page, it's copyrighted. It's done. It's finished. And if anybody tries to take it from you, you have full right to take them to court. But if you're actually file it and pay the thirty-five dollar fee, then that strengthens your case in case anybody tries to steal your book. But yeah, if you do it self-publish, it's all on you. Yeah, I understand that. That's good. That's fine. You, you can do it all electronically now. You don't even actually have to send in print books anymore. I, mean, I from my where I've worked at the library, it's I, that's my full-time job. What? Not today, unfortunately. But uh, with the Library of Congress, is working with a lot of those book submissions that come in. The uh. They, but they do take electronic submissions, so you don't even have to send in a print book. And you can even just send the manuscript. If it's just a Word document, they can accept that. Well, now, independent, independent publishers are, are actual companies. And it's a case of those tend to be authors themselves that build up the skill set of selling their books and are now sharing that skill set with other authors. That's what happened with me. I published my first two books. Then, funny, funny, when there was the last government shutdown, I started up this company, and now I have 15 authors with 20 books available, 10 podcast series, and 5 video series. So, it's incredible what you could do when you could find pe creative people out there and help them really tell their story. 
So yeah, a lot of independent publishers started with that, where you had someone who either wrote a book or had a friend or, or a family member that wrote a book. Uh, we have a very close friendship with another independent publisher here in D.C. called Possibilities Publishing. And in that case, it's the daughter of an author started her own company. So there's all kinds of different stories for independent publishers out there. It depends on how thick the book is. It depends on the type of paper, the type of binding. Uh, typically, I've seen an average trade paperback, which is six inches by nine inches, uh, run about, if it's a hundred pages, which would be, of course, double sided. So really, that'd only be about 10,000, 15,000 words. That's about $2.90, $3 per book, but that's just a rough estimation there. It depends on how thick the work is. It depends on uh, what type of cover artwork, any additional artwork that would be inside. So, and then of course the size. Typically, if you're working with, yeah, three probably three dollars per book is for the smallest book. That's an individual price. Uh, some of the self-publishing companies need a. Need you to put down a certain amount of money to start. Well, th there are some where they have uh, a setup fee, where they will charge you to help to set it up, and then they'll ch a low rate after that. Others, I mean, it all depends. It depends on who you were looking at. I mean, we've had. I mean, if you're looking working with a a, a regular printer. They want you to order a certain number of books. If you're working with some of the print on demand, they don't. It doesn't matter how many you order. Although with them, the price goes down the more books you order. It's simply like I know my experience with Lulu specifically. They knock fifteen percent off for every fifteen books you order. Okay, so that's 120 pages in 8.5 by 11. Oh. So that probably be about, this is a rough estimation, depending on the margin size and the size of the font. I'm guessing you're working in something like Times New Roman size 12 or, uh, what is that, Calibri size 12. You're probably looking at about 240, 250 pages. So you're probably thinking, if you're working with someone like CreateSpace or Lulu. Okay, times we want 14. Oh, 14. Okay, that's bigger than you would want actually going to print. And then, of course, that's not putting in whatever page breaks you would need. Title pages, copyright notice about the author and all that. So let's just guesstimate there about 200, 250 pages. So that's novella size, just short a novel. Uh, for that, you'd want, you'd probably be looking at four, five, maybe six dollars, four to five, six dollars per book, depending on paper quality. And if you're working with someone like CreateSpace or Lulu, it's not that hard to set up. Yeah, absolutely. The st average book, you're looking at about 200. Uh, let's see what we have here. Economic growth of the United States. That's about 300 pages right there. So that's what a three, how thick a 300 page book is. Great Gatsby. Trade paperback size. That's about 240 pages right there. Here's Arthur Miller, Death of the Salesman. That's 140 pages, so you can see how thin 140 pages is. And it's a little bit less the trade paperback size, but just an idea there. Well, it's a labor of love doing writing. It took me, it was five years for my first book to get done, so I can imagine. Uh, 
well, I mean, it could all it could be a hobby. I mean, my writing started as a hobby. I'm full time. I'm a librarian. Part time. I'm a publisher and author. So, yeah. Well, as my dad always said, find a job you love, and you'll never work a day in your life. So, if you like writing, then be a writer. Uh, there was someone else that said they wanted to ask a question. I didn't see any question from them pop up. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how that works sometimes. I wrote my first book because I was antsy to start writing on a larger book project that 14 years later I still haven't finished. Yeah. Well, yeah, you could put an unedited copy up there on Amazon I mean, with CreateSpace or with straight through Amazon, yeah. Hello, Scotland. Good to see you. We're here in uh, Mount Vernon, Virginia, just outside Washington, D.C. Uh, yeah, you could put it up there, and who, who knows, you might even sell your own car. I mean, sell a couple copies to other people, but... Yeah, there's nothing stopping you from just putting it up there. I haven't read Lonesome Dove. My wife has read some of it, and she's watched all of this, all of the TV series. Uh, no, it wouldn't work right from word to book, because it, what they would do is they'd give you a format, and then you'd have to change the Word document to that proper format. Because, I mean, typically you'd want... Amazon prefers trade paperback, which is six by nine. So, primarily, yes, because uh, I'm we're an independent media company, so we do books, podcasts, and video series. So that's the questions I'm looking to answer. If you have a question about something else, I might be able to answer that as well. <laughs> there isn't there isn't an app for that right now. And I think a lot of the publishing industry is hesitant for there to be an app like that. Because to maintain the quality of the market, they want to make sure that there are still certain gatekeepers, you know, editors, proofreaders, reviewers out there. All right, there's nothing stopping you from putting it all on a blog and just putting it online. The expertise regarding the thing I mentioned? Well, I'm the publisher of AS21 Media, independent media company based out of Mount Vernon, Virginia. We've been operating since uh, late 2013. We have 15 authors with 20 stories, open genre, so we're, it's all types of books. We have nine, about to be 10 podcast series, five video series. We've exhibited at book fairs across the D.C. area. What a Right. Well, yeah, but that that's for the electronic release. If you wanted to do print, they're going to want you to change the format of the Word document to a proper page size and have a... They might, they, they'll probably tell you some other formatting things that they want because they don't probably not going to want it double-spaced or with any... Uh, uh, with certain set margins. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, 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 I am. Yep. Yeah, that that's the price I've seen from a lot of places. Some is a higher charge. Uh, I know there's a. Uh, print-on-demand service based out of Towson University in Maryland, where they charge you a $50 setup fee, and then it's like $5 per book, no matter what size. But that, that's one that's supported by a university, but I, Lulu's been around a long time, has had a lot of customers over the years, so it's a lot cheaper. 
All right, that's fine. Now, I'm not recruiting authors here specifically. This is a free service that we offer on the 21st of every month because I like storytellers and I want to help them tell their stories. So I'm not here recruiting specifically. If you want to check out what my company does and uh, the services we offer through our self-publishing arm, ePress21, you're more than welcome to do so. But I'm more here as a public service. This is something I like doing. We try to do it every month. Sometimes technical difficulties, the weather and family issues keep that from happening. But I'm here right now. Oh yeah, absolutely we have a business model behind us. I, I, I hope that being able to share the stories of what we do at AS21 makes you interested in what my company is doing and that you check out our self-publishing arm at ePress21 and see the services that we offer. We offer all of our editors, designers, and publisher work available for reasonable fees and try to help authors tell their stories. We've done that I, not only on top of the 15 authors we have signed at AS21, but we've helped several authors beyond that and creators We because not only do we help provide editing services or cover design or ebook distribution, but we've also do podcast production and video production. For anybody that wants to watch this uh, webcast from the start, it will be uploaded on our YouTube page after this is done, as well as our uh, video series page, video.as21.com. It'll be up there with all of our other video series, including past editions of this. It's actually, one of the I, we usually have a few questions. No, we take business risk still. I mean, that with our 15 authors we have, there's a lot of risk with it. But we don't work at like a traditional publisher in the fact that traditional publishers, well, a lot of them don't take as much risk. We take a bit more at times. But uh, traditional publishers try to keep everything in-house. And, but they also have a lot of gatekeepers. They, have a, they require to work with literary agents. They require you to have a certain following or guaranteed sales already available to you. In my company, we don't do that. We just are interested in the stories themselves. Uh, most, when we work with our specific authors, most of our income from them is a percentage of royalties. So, all right, for those watching on YouTube, we've got to cut off now, but we're going to continue talking on... Uh, on Periscope. So, okay, so turn off that one on YouTube. Yes, a uh, small amount. Yes, we, it basically, it's a distribution charge, just like any distributor would charge for listing your book on the market. We, help, we do promotions, we get them into book festivals, we book them events, so we charge them. In the case of most of our authors, it's a 20% uh, charge of their royalties. So that's whatever money comes in after the regular distribution costs and printing costs, production costs. And then, But we work with all the distributors for them, we do... All, several different. We do events. We do all kinds of things to help get their mark, their book out there. We do advertising and promotion. And then, if we do a good job of it, then more money comes in because more people are buying their book. We've got two books right now that have been really burning up the sales at the end of 2017. A nonfiction book called "American Presidents at War" has sold over a hundred copies, and it just came out in October, so it's doing quite well. 
and we had a, a launch event for it at the Library of Congress, and we did a follow-up event at a bookstore in D.C. No, we do, we don't we don't give uh, we don't pay authors for their book. We don't do advances. That's one thing. That's a limitation for independent publishers. You can't really do many advances because the. I mean, in the case of most independent publishers, there just isn't the funding there to be able to do that. Yeah, we don't buy my manuscripts like uh, some traditional publishers can. And those typically tend to go to people that already have a substantial market behind them, either television or movie stars, your politicians or other people that are in the cultural zeitgeist. Have a time at time fifteen. Well, yeah, I. In some cases, it's just to help. In others, I and I, some authors, yes, absolutely. I mean, it'd be difficult for us to take on an established author because we just don't have the infrastructure for someone that would have that much of a following. But we're helping the authors that can't get that and helping them to become established authors. I mean, that's what most independent publishers are. There is, I believe I saw a stat that there's something on the edge of 800,000 books were copyrighted last year. Or not last year, but 2016. And that's just a staggering amount when you consider it. And it's people doing it on their own or it's people working with independent publishers or uh, self-publishing. So there is, oh yeah, that's not, not copyrighted, that's people that are filing for ISBNs, the International Standard uh, Book Number. And so there's a lot of people out there trying to get their stories, and we're, we've got our group, we've got our core that we're trying to work with and trying to help, doing the best we can. Sometimes it's not it's not much. Sometimes it can be a lot. It all depends on what people need, what people want. I mean, most of our authors, this is something they're doing on the side. They're, you know, they have their careers, they have their jobs, and they're just authors as well. Now, a couple of them are retired, and you know, have moved on from long careers in other fields, and they're now writing as a release, writing as something to do. I guess, idea we have a clinical psychologist who writes poetry. We have, yeah. Well, we. It's usually pretty good. It's surprising sometimes. We don't, we don't we we haven't had real open submissions for a while now because we're trying to really focus on the 15 authors we have, but the quality we get that we get in is usually pretty high. We put out a literary magazine every fall and we're usually good for 15 to 20 submissions from outside that are usually pretty good. I we've been very lucky to find good stuff. Uh, the sky is blue because of a diffusion of light from the sun when hitting the Earth's atmosphere. Just makes uh, the the light, the prism of the air particles, makes blue the dominant color. Bet you didn't think I'd be able to answer that, huh? Oh uh, well, we're, first of all, we're a part-time company. We're not doing this full-time, but we are making money right now because of the fact. We're able, uh, we have two books that are doing extremely well in sales, and we are currently have a couple uh, people that we are doing podcast production for, so we're having a regular income coming in from that. It's not enough to make us full-time for me or any of my staff, but for part-time work, we're, we're doing pretty well. We're paying our bills, 
those people are getting paid and we've got several opportunities we're going to be going to we're going to book festivals and being able to cover the cost of that so uh, let's see my company with the management team is six people and then we have seven or eight editors four graphic designers one audio, one additional audio engineer three voiceover artists and uh, yeah that covers it so about a dozen to 15 people all working part-time War and Peace is definitely worth the time and effort it is an incredible book if you have if you have enough interest in it and you have the endurance to continue reading it over the time it's necessary I definitely recommend War and Peace if you want a, something that's long but not as long, I recommend uh, Two Years Before the Mast. Uh, an excellent book about seafaring life, and it was actually one of the books that uh, inspired the author David McCullough to become an author. I read it on his recommendation and was thoroughly enjoyed it. But yeah, War and Peace is definitely a slog. It's long. Know what you're getting into, but it is an excellent book. some reason the thing started turning okay I have 920 now so we're gonna head ahead and wrap this up the YouTube already had to cut out because the battery was going yes yeah every one of my employees has another job well actually one currently is between jobs but yeah yes like my Full time, I work for the Library of Congress in Washington D.C. At least, not right now, specifically because of the shutdown. But our chief of publishing also is the editor, uh, top editor of a uh, scientific magazine. Our web designer, our chief technology officer, also is a tech guy for a marketing firm in New York City. Our chief of audio production is also a. Uh, correspondent reporter for a political magazine. We have, and uh, every one of us is has unique abilities and shares that as working with us. It was this was a case of this started company started for you. Oh, good. I, I do my best. I I hate having to say I don't know. So you're welcome. Feel free to ask any other questions. I do my best to try to learn and understand everything. Nice. So yeah, feel free to ask anything. I'm an open book. I answer any questions people ask of me, even when I probably shouldn't. This has been a good discussion tonight. Good back and forth. I've enjoyed this. When can I work full time with this? Oh. We need to have stable income coming in every month to be able to work it. Because in the case of most of us, we're all... I, I I have the most responsibility of everyone in the company, not only as publisher, owner, and uh, sole proprietor, but also I am a husband and father of two, so I have a family to support. So it, I would have to reach a, le a high level of steady income coming in to be able to make this full-time. Either that or win the lottery. Like, if I would have won on uh, Powerball when it was at $400 million, then, uh, yeah, this would be full-time. Right now, with this, the amount of income I get for my full-time job and the benefits, it makes this job easy. Okay? Always open to suggestions.
sign a Swedish established writer in Nordic crime. Okay. Sounds interesting. I'm intrigued. Sounds reasonable, yeah. If you have someone in mind, my email is pub, P-U-B, at AS21.com. That's A-O-I-S-21.com. I'm always interested in hearing suggested submissions. In fact, our chief of publishing, Corey Parker, was born in Sweden. So we have a connection to Sweden. Uh, email pub at aois21.com pub at aois21.com that's my email that's where we get submissions that's where we get questions the rest of the month I'd love to hear more yeah pub at AOIS21.com. AOIS21.com. That goes to me directly. AOIS2121. AOIS21.com. There's the website, there's our phone number. I don't know if that's showing up forwards or backwards actually. But pub at as21.com. Which means me, I answer emails all hours of the day. So. All right, any other questions? Okay. Trying to think. Oh, yes, they are. I'm not sure. Is Stieg Larsson Swedish or is he? I'm not sure. Ah, yes. Well, obviously, uh, well, Stieg Larsson is huge. I mean, you know, the book moving on with the new author now, uh, The Girl in the Spider Web. I've heard it's still doing well, even though he's no longer writing the series. But, uh, yeah, Elizabeth Salt. Yeah. Yeah, it's doing very well over here. So, yeah, a Swedish Nordic crime writer might, might be a good step. This is being a... This is, I've spoken with a lot of authors today. I just got off before this. We had... Before this webcast, we have a webinar. At, Are you ready to self-publish? And they had someone on that who was helping a uh, author get a book that has gone out of print and get it back up and running. And then earlier today I spoke with someone. Well, we start with conversation and uh, as far as the signed author, we have a publishing agreement that's good for that's for five years. And that's exclusive rights. 
obviously in this case in the United States, we would then work with you to find work with it uh, upon cover design, any editing that would need to be worked, obviously might be something in translation. Uh, but finding a good deal on a printer or print on demand service or whichever to try to get in market and then putting together a marketing plan and promotional plan. Well, that, that's the standard uh, publishing contract that we deal with. There is the op opportunity to opt out each year. Yeah, that, that is common. Some even go longer than that. I've seen some that are three years, but there is the ability to opt out on the anniversary of the signing for each year, and we give that opportunity. Per book. Yeah, it's publishing agreement is per book. I'm seeing more people join in. That's it's great, but at some point, it's time to move on. Yeah, I'm not going to go anywhere until people stop asking me questions. So I have no problem. Yet. If you're interested in knowing more about the publishing industry, we have a monthly podcast series called Publish Me that comes out on the 7th of each month. Well, I mean, obviously, it, the standard is five years. But we have the ability to opt out on the anniversary, each anniversary we did. We as the publishing company could opt out or you as the author could opt out. So really, it's a minimum one year deal. And we'd need some reason for it there to be an opt out, but there's no, it's not written in stone that it's a full five years. I mean, so far, every author we've signed has been five years and is going towards the full length of service. In fact, we're coming up on five years on a couple. Yeah, absolutely. Everything is negotiable. Uh, we've had several times where we've reviewed sections of our publishing agreement and made changes. Uh, one of our most recent signings, an uh, author named Tommy Reynolds, we had n numerous discussions over the contract before it was signed. Last I checked, no liberals is a stupid baby murderer. If you have a problem with someone being pro-abortion rights, then that's your issue. But last I checked, there are no people actually walking around on the streets murdering babies. I need, there is no evidence whatsoever that at any time has Hillary Clinton murdered a baby. I remember if there were any actual votes when she was in the Senate about abortion rights that came up. Uh, I know there was an attempt for abortion or birther. It all depends on what you classify as a baby. Now that is a, a discuss way beyond what we're discussing here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's all negotiable. There is a thing called the uh, Hyde Amendment that doesn't allow the government funds in the United States to fund abortions. Now, there have been attempts to overrule that, but it has not happened. It is illegal currently for that to happen. Yes. Well, you have to be flexible for an independent publisher. 
flexibility is part of the game. Flex because each author is different, each story is different, so a flexibility is required. Oh, glad you think so. You have a good day as well. Oh yeah. Yep. Well, that's why we keep our prices reasonable and we basically take a all angle approach to things. And we try as much as we can to do what we can with the limits of free media and then going from there to try to do targeted approaches on what we pay for. So we're very, we try to be smart. We try to be wise with how we actually put our resources. And they've worked out pretty well so far. We've gotten into some very good events and we've had opportunities to go to other, to do other things because of some of the things we've done. Like we were invited down to the Charlottesville Book Festival this past November in Charlottesville, Virginia. And we were the only book publisher where there was only two book publishers there. Everyone else were authors or poets. And we were the only one invited from outside the Charlottesville area. And that's because we had built a friendship up with the author that ended up organizing that book festival. And we had a great time. And we're going to go back next year. We're probably going to help sponsor next year's festival. So finding, using our contacts making opportunities happen to support our authors to is uh, what we do I mean, it, and you never know what opportunity is going to come up we started podcasting as a way to help our authors get their work out there and now we have nine podcast series about to launch a tenth and we are now that's an income stream for us now because we now do podcast production and it allows us to make audio ads and we're building up our technology. We got better microphones, better audio equipment, better software, and then we can produce audiobooks, which seems to be where the market is going now. We had originally launched thinking ebooks was the way, but audiobooks seem to be working. Yep. Basically, every online market we can get on, we are. We're on Amazon, we're on Smashwords, we're on Kobo, we're on Bar Barnes & Noble, we're on Apple, we're on Gangsy, uh, and we're working through Ingram Spark to get us into other independent bookstores, as well as the new Microsoft ebook market that just rolled out a few weeks ago. Basically, if we want to get our, book in, our books in front of readers, we need to be everywhere readers are. I'm loving seeing all these hearts pop up in the corner. This is fantastic. I'm feeling the love. I really am. This is great. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, it's definitely an important issue for the author. You don't want to sign with us and then find out that we're only going to put you on Kobo. Which... Nothing against Kobo and the people at Rakuten, but that's not... <sighs> okay. Uh, that's not really enough. That's not nearly enough. I, I hate working with Amazon. Amazon is a bad deal for authors, but you have to work with Amazon. Because that's where a majority of people buy books. And the second biggest market behind Amazon is Walmart. And Walmart is not great to work with either, but you have to try to work with them. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah, I understood. Yeah. Well, I need to get going now. It looks like there just seemed to be a development 
in the Senate, and it looks like uh, I got the day off tomorrow. Uh, big book chains we have. We are trying. We have been reaching out to a few uh, medium-sized chains. We don't have any partnership with the big ones, but we are on with Ingram Spark, which at least gives us the ability to work with all of the major chains because everybody uses Ingram at some point. Yeah, Ingram works nationwide. We also have uh, an account with Nielsen Bookcast, which gets us into the UK and a lot of the European market. I know that we've we have a couple of our books have made it into bookstores out in California, uh, you know, up and down the East Coast, north up to Boston, down into Florida. We are trying to forge partnerships with some of the small chains like Book Warehouse, which is located in uh, various uh, outlets across the country. There is a uh, 11 store book chain around the Pittsburgh area that I really want to work with because I'm from Pittsburgh originally and it'd be love to be able to get on the shelves there. And for us as a company, we the thing to do is we as we promote our books. My name is Keith Shovlin. And uh what we do is we promote our books because, as I say, as I say, a rising tide lifts all boats. So if we have a couple books that really grab people's attention, then that can allow all of our authors to do better because getting in, ha having the couple books that we have that are doing really well right now helps us get open doors that allows our other author authors to succeed as well. So every new book that we put out, every new author we sign is another opportunity. And being open genre means we have lots of opportunities. So there's nobody we would say no to. We have what would uh, an erotic fiction book among our catalog and we have a children's book. We're talking with someone that's writing a cookbook. We're talking with people that have some diverse ideas of different things that we don't currently do, but can do. All right, our most successful book currently is American Presidents at War. Okay. Well... I mean, obviously, the first step in anything like that is to try to build a word of mouth through press. Having a Swedish author sign with an independent publisher here in the United States for American release. You've got to work that, that story, get that into the press, and then build word of mouth from that. And then be able to set a timetable and then do active promotion, pre-orders, and then hopefully get it to a point where bookstores are contacting us to try to make deals. I have a few friends at various news sources around. I used to be a journalist back in college, so a few avenues of there to just uh, go through. All right, well, shoot me an email. I'm Keith Shevlin, publisher of AS21 Media. I'd love to talk more. If you guys have any other questions throughout the month, you can email me, pub at as21.com. Oh, yeah, that's something to be discussed. I, I can't go to... T I'm not sure exactly how much detail I'm going to talk about it. Yeah. I think at, at this point, that's more, it probably should be more of a private discussion rather than the open discussion on here. I'm just, and plus to give me time to think over.
If you have any questions throughout the month, email me or you can contact us through Twitter at AS21 or on Facebook, facebook.com slash so AS21. This webcast. Well, if it's a book that's not currently available in our market, and, well, yes, it'd be nice. If it's not available in our market, the best thing to do would be to start with a book that's not currently available here and make it available in this market. And then from that, sign a supplementary deal for the next book in the series, the next book from that author. And then they kind of build on itself. So it'd be, you know, a snowball rolling down the hill, getting bigger and bigger. And obviously that would give opportunities for you as an author. I, maybe we're just the ones to help open the door. Uh, ideally, I'd hope to build a partnership that would allow long-term success together, but you have to do what's best for you. We have to do what's best for us. Be completely honest there. Absolutely, yeah. I realize I don't need to keep those on anymore. Yeah, yeah, you got yeah, proof of concept. Absolutely. I mean, for the most part, I mean I've seen obviously we've seen the success, at least in Stieg Larson's case, but there's a bit other other successes. I mean I constantly see other crime books, James Patterson and David Baldati on that. Yeah. That might be. You alright? Shoot me an email and we'll talk about it more. Alright, since this has gone on much longer than the original one, so we're going to actually have two versions of this webcast up on our YouTube pages and our video.as21.com. So. I believe so. It's all right. Don't need to say sorry. Sorry, I was just try my best to uh, be able to read it clearly on the screen. I'm sure at some point my battery might die on my phone. So. Let's see. It's been very nice talking to you. I look forward to seeing your email and continuing this conversation, just the two of us rather than having the audience. All right. Well, thank you all for watching. As I said, we're going to be doing, we're actually going to post this video twice. We're going to do the original YouTube one that only lasted about 25 minutes, but then we'll do the extended version with the one here from Periscope, so there will be two postings from the AS21 YouTube channel and video.as21.com. Thank you so much, all of you that t commented tonight. This has been fantastic. This is the whole reason we do this is the opportunity to reach out to authors like you. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Have a great day. Have a great week. Have a great month. Go write your stories. Go be creative. And let your story out there. Have a good night.